as I told you, we have two different types of machines that we have designed with the factory. And I have absolutely no idea how these are going to work. So it might be that the gravity-based ventilation works better than the mechanical or the other way around. You will find out the same time that I will. So here is another one. Uh, this is a bit bigger, much, much heavier model. Let's put it there. With both of these machines, we wanted to have this control knob that is adjustable. When we turn on the mechanical vent with this pattern, it will be at 30 CFM and when it's at its max it will be 210 CFM so then this mechanical vent would work for small saunas as well as for the big ones and we are testing these machines or picked this specific model because these are quite quiet usually mechanical fans tend to produce some noise but these are very very quiet I had mechanical fans in this sauna before that we just took off but those were quite noisy and they had to be controlled through the sauna heater panel then we have the other one here. This is a bit smaller, but I actually have higher expectations for this one, since this is even quieter than the other one. But we have to find out how they handle the heat when we heat up the sauna to like 230 Fahrenheit. So then we will find out how these bad boys hold up. They should hold up, but you never know. So this is how the other machine looks like. It's considerably smaller if you compare to this one. We have taken the middle bench off. So here you would have like a middle foot bench and here you would have a couple steps, but we had to take it off so we can bring in the air next to the heater like that. So here we have the smaller machine installed right now next to the hive. So usually you want to bring in your fresh air intake next to your heater and this is angled up. So the air will get pushed up but we will show you with the thermal camera exactly how the air moves. And here we can see we have the button. You can maybe hear it. When we turn it up, it starts pushing considerably more. Like that. Let's heat up the sound and let's see what happens. So this is the intake. It's bringing the air next to the heater. Regardless if this would be a machine or if it would be just when the machine is turned on, then it's gravity based. It would be about at the same place. And then, then that white box is where we have the exhaust vent right now. So that is mechanical. It has been mechanical before, but now we are changing it to the other machine. Then the test will be how the air moves when the machines are off versus when they are on. Because when they are off, we still have the ventilation openings in the correct places. With gravity-based ventilation, it would be optimal if we drop the air from the top of the heater. This is then the backside of the sauna. So this is way too long. This is the intake vent pipe. I have to cut it from there later on. That is the intake vent right there. And that is the exhaust vent on the corner here. So we are changing our new machine to the exhaust vent and removing the old machine. And I said the intake is here, but the pipe takes the intake right next to the heater since the heater is in the middle of the sauna in this case. And here we have the Uku's main module. We had the old ventilation machine installed to this one, but the new ones won't be installed to it. It's quite cold outside, so it will take probably one and a half hours for the sauna to heat up. So I will turn it on right now. So just by double clicking, you can turn on the Uku and you will have these three lines indicating that it's heating up. So you should never actually do it this way. So we have something here next to the heater and all that. The elements start from somewhere here, so the bottom won't get really hot. And we are still installing the exhaust vent. Can, can you see it? You can't see it, but we are still installing the exhaust vent and making a pipe for it. So there you can see the exhaust. It's under the foot bench because that creates the optimal air movement, as you will see when we use the thermal camera. Or then you won't see, because I'm not sure if the machines will work. <laughs> or if this works as I want to. So I will find out exactly when you will find out. Now the machine is there in the middle. So then we can pull the air from a bit more centered position for the testing purposes. So these were the old machines. Uh, this was the old exhaust vent machine and this was in the intake which was inside this pipe. So now this is the new intake one. So exhaust is there in the middle and going out from the back. So we will see shortly what kind of air circulation we can make with the new machines. So why is ventilation even important in the sauna? 
well since hot air rises and cold air plummets if you don't have any sort of ventilation all the hot air will be here on the roof level and all the cold air will be on the lower level of the sauna because there is stratification so in order to equalize the temperatures across the sauna and have your body equally heated you need to have some sort of air circulation most saunas do this by just having these openings and hoping that the airflow from the heater pulls some air from your intake and then that something goes out from the exhaust which, which usually happens i guess we will see shortly uh, very visually then another thing is that when you have a lot of people inside a sauna and they are sweating and their heart rate goes up they are consuming a lot of oxygen and then when you run out of oxygen and replace it with co2 that doesn't turn out too nicely so usually people run out of oxygen because there is no fresh air coming in so that's why it's important to have ventilation inside a sauna so now we have the thermal camera here attached to my phone so the sauna has been warming up for a while let's see how it looks so you can see the stove is extremely hot then as we can see here are the temperature differences. So the upper part of the sauna is like 160 Fahrenheit now. And this is a good explanation of the temperature differences inside the sauna. So then the lower we go, you can see how the temperature goes down. So then this part, for example, right here, the foot bench, it's like 50 Fahrenheit now. And there on the roof, it's 170. So this is what happens in the sauna without when the mechanical ventilation is not on and is not circulating. So we will let it let it get hotter and then we will come and check with the thermal camera when we turn the ventilation machines on. What's up? Now the sauna has been fully heated up and now we will do the final check with the thermal camera to see the temperature differences to illustrate this and then we will get into the sauna and start te testing it ourselves. So we can see that the roof level is like 180. It's like 180 there on the roof. Bench level is 165 and it's really hot in here. Then the foot bench level here, let's check that. It's like 115 Fahrenheit. And now we will also find out if the machines work or not when it gets hot. And we will also see how the temperature starts moving and how the sauna starts heating up. So that's now on. Then let's turn this one on. That's turned on. That's turned on and that's turned on. So both of the exhausts are now running. I have to get out, it's so hot. Let's see if we see any, any movement in the temperatures. Well, without throwing steam, we can't see any movements. But we can actually see a bit of movement here with the thermal camera. Let's turn it up. Now we can see a bit from the camera how the cold air starts coming in. And when we turn this off, this is how it looks like. So you can maybe see a bit of visuals of the air movement stopping. And when we pull that higher, so you can see that when only the exhaust is on, it also starts pulling the air in from here because the air have to, has to come from somewhere when you exhaust it. What that means is that you only need the exhaust vent and that's what we usually recommend that you have mechanical exhaust vent in any sauna or you add one into it because then the hot air will get pulled down from the ceiling to the lower levels. You will get more oxygen and all of that fun stuff. So you won't suffocate in your sauna. Yeah, I can feel the movement coming from the intake now. Not sure if we can see it on the thermal camera. I guess we'll find out later. But when we turn this off, let's see if the movement changes then. It's so hot in here, gosh. Yeah, now there's nothing coming in, in from this one. Absolute no movement when the exhaust is off. I'm not sure if we can demonstrate the temperature differences and the difference between mechanical and gravity-based ventilation, but now the air is not moving at all. 
there's very very little movement here. I can feel very slight movement I would say. And let's see when we turn this on, start pushing more oxygen, more fresh air into the sauna. I will put on my swimming trunks and let's check the load, the steam movement with and without ventilation on mechanical ventilation. So we will check the steam movement with gravity based ventilation and with mechanical ventilation. Okay, so now we're ready to get into the sauna to test the steam movement. The camera might die, but let's throw some, throw some steam and see how the air moves. I will try to find the easiest, easiest spot for the camera, so some colder spot. We can actually check with the thermal camera where the cold spot might be. At least for now, there we can see it's a much colder spot. So let's put this bad boy there. We will throw some lowly. So we have the thermal camera on. We will throw some lowly and uh, see with the thermal camera how the air moves when the ventilation is not on and we throw lowly. We can see I test stuff with the sound all the time. So the LED has been <laughs> stripped off. Didn't hold too well apparently. Now we have the thermal camera up there, we have this camera in here. I will get my phone out that is connected to the thermal camera. I will throw some load and you will see how the movement is. So we can see now all the hot air getting to the ceiling level. And we can see the hot air hanging in the ceiling level. Let's see if it changes when we when we open the door all the steam gets out. Let's put it like, like here maybe. I need like some sort of automatic steam system to run these tests. Oh, so let me come inside actually. Show the steam movement from the heater. As we can see, all the steam goes up, but nothing seems to come down, and I can't feel any steam when sitting on this lower bench. Yep, so all the steam is there in the ceiling, and nothing is coming down. So let's now put on only the exhaust vent. Turn this button. Let's see if anything starts coming down even before we push lower. And then let's, let's throw some water and see how the air moves now. It goes up, but it's coming down as well. As we can see, the load is getting pulled down from the ceiling. Let's throw a lot because we need to really get this effect. Everything goes up. But now I can also feel it on my lower body and even on my legs. Because the air is getting pulled down by the exhaust when that is see if I can show that. It's right there. Ah, oh, shit. Let's then turn on the intake as well. Now we can see some air coming from there. From right here, we can see the air coming in. The oxygen, the fresh air coming in from here. Now the air is really circulating. And it seems like the temperatures are starting to even out quite a lot. That's how it feels at least. As we can see, here we have some hot air hanging around there. Yep, so it's hard to illustrate and my things will die soon. But hope this gives you some perspective on how the air circulates. Now I will just enjoy my session, yeah, I will catch you guys away. I recommend everyone to get a mechanical exhaust ventilation machine, if possible. These are the ones that we are testing now, uh, we are not selling this yet. Maybe we will in the future, maybe we won't. 
but the goal of our videos is not to sell you anything, we just want to educate and show you how sauna works. I wanted to show you guys this angle as well, so this is from the back of the sauna. So we can see the hot air coming out from here. I can see it with my eyes, but you still can see much movement in the thermal camera. And then cold air getting in from here. And obviously it's now way, way too aggressive. Like the sauna will get really cold with this kind of pressure, but you can like physically see the air moving, moving from here. And especially after you throw lowly, you can see how it starts slowly coming out from here, which means that it circulates all the air inside the sauna. I will go and throw some lowly so you can see how the air moves. So in case the mic is still connected, I'm not sure. I'm throwing the lowly now. And maybe, I'm not there in the back, so I'm not sure, but maybe you guys will soon see the lowly coming out from the other side. I will come and watch with you. I want to see myself. Now the lowly starts coming out. It's just now, as you can see, you can even see that cloud there. It's just now starting to come out, so it has circulated through the sauna. So it means that the mechanical one really works. Compared to if that wouldn't be on, we wouldn't see any air movement in this area that you guys see now. Well, anyways, hopefully you found this valuable. So an update, ventilation machines are working really well, but please ensure that when you have the intake vent pulling air in, ensure that you put some sort of a cover right here, because I just had a leaf come through uh, the machine straight to the heater and that way you can burn your heater or something. If you really install something like this, this is entertainment purposes only, so don't install them because fast, but remember to put something like this on top of your uh, intake, especially. Exhaust is always going to push air out, so not sure if it's that necessary. Depends if you have mice or something that can go through the exhaust, but for the intake, always remember to put the cover. So far the ventilation machines are holding really well, no issues, both still working. Next we will stress test them for real. So since I have multiple machines, I will install the other ones on the top bench. Then I will throw a lot of lowly and let the sound run for a long time. So we can see if these things can actually hold the heat and humidity, like extreme heat and humidity, because the top bench is much more humid and much hotter than it is down there. Let's get these bad boys installed. So now I have both of the vent models we are testing running at maximum maximum speed here on the upper bench and now I will start throwing a lot of water on the heater and then I will let them be here for a couple of hours and we will see how it ends up. So it's quite windy here in between the two both pushing towards each other. So thanks for joining the sauna heater product testing laboratory. I know this won't be the most popular video we have ever made but maybe some of you enjoyed. Thanks for watching.